Wow, this base is freaking massive on the outside. Oh, oh, hello there, everybody. Welcome back for the final installment of the Providence Ridge base reviews. We're here at Lundegard Lumber Mill. I have already cleared it out. I forgot just how big and open this base actually is. But, like I said, already cleared it. So let's go ahead and take a quick look before I start building. Lundegard Lumber Mill, a huge roofed open space where we could build whatever we want. Comes with unlimited materials. Yeah, we'll see about that. This is an 8-man 3500 influence base, just like Prescott Fire Station, except it's not just like Prescott Fire Station, and you shall see why. So, this base comes with four parking slots. It is two on one side, two on the other. It comes with the sawmill, which creates materials if we have power. There's a lifetime supply of logs on site we can use for this purpose. We will take a look at that specific little built-in. It has a clearable lumber pile that will turn into materials once we clear it all out. And that's it. So it is the polar opposite of Prescott. It had just this long list of built-in uh, uh, facilities, whereas this one only has one built-in facility. So we'll see how that kind of translates once we get the base actually built up, but I'm sure we will come to the conclusion already put forth that they are complete opposites as far as customization goes. But with that being said, I'll see you when the screen returns from black and I will have this bad boy built up for you. All right, and we are back. I've got this base built up and who it took a long time. If I'm not mistaken, it took me at least 45 minutes to an hour to get everything built all the way up even though I didn't have to hunt down any materials whatsoever. I mean, as you can see up in the top left, I still have 144 left. So materials were not the problem. It just took forever to build all of these facilities, and you will understand why in a minute. So before we get into that, we'll look at location. We've been doing that, so we might as well continue with it. It is at the bottom right of the map over by New Hope Church, the landmark outpost for Providence Ridge. We went over that in the first episode, so if you missed it, please go check it back out. We looked at it and the Firewatch Fortress at the very beginning. Um, as far as things going on around it, it is kind of off on its own little island. It does have a decent amount of things to loot over here. I know there's at least a few auto workshops. There's a bunch of um, these little storage sheds that tend to have materials in them. There we go. Tool shed has materials in it. Materials in it. There's a warehouse over here that probably has materials. So I mean there's a good amount of little knickknacks and materials to be found over here. I'm sure there's some more food and probably a medicine and an ammo, if I'm not mistaken. But up above it, this is got mostly just knickknacks. And once you get out of that, you're doing a fairly good drive. But you're going back to the starting area that you've probably looted clean on a higher difficulty. And after that, you're just coming back over here to Prescott Fire Station to clean that up. And then all of this is just so far away that it's kind of annoying. But that being said, this is quite a potent base. It, it, it has a complete opposite of Prescott. So in Prescott, we had a ton of built-ins. This one, we have a singular built-in. So the only built-in that we have, and I'm running it right now, is the sawmill. So you can produce materials. Now I'm not 100% sure the cooldowns, so I figured I would go ahead and run this, and when it finishes, we will look at the cooldown for at least the smallest one, and then it will go up in time from there. 
Now the noise difference isn't really, as far as I can tell, it doesn't make that big a difference in your sieges anymore. So they didn't really upgrade that from what I can tell. Oh, excuse me. But it will have freaks will build up more. I just load it in, so I don't have a ton of them around my base at this moment. But it will make them build up a little bit more around your base from what I've noticed. And the higher you go, the more of them I guess it'll bring. I don't know. I'm already at raucous. I think the last one is cacophony or some weird no word I've never heard of. And I have quite a vocabulary to begin with. But this can be a pretty neat thing. All you need is power and labor and you can build what? That takes six and a half minutes. Uh, that'd be 12, 14, 50, and then 24, 50. So every 25 minutes, it'll take 25 minutes, but you can make six materials, which isn't a ton, but depending on the cooldown, you could use this to build up your materials gradually to try and help you fill out this base because it took a ton because it has five large slots. So that changes how you would lay this base out. Now I didn't lay this one out specifically how I probably would because I kind of want to give an overview to some of the more specific large facilities. Mainly the ones that you get from having different leader types, your warlords, your sheriffs, your traders, and your builders, and so on. Well, those are only four, but you, you get what I'm saying. So we'll get to those in a second. We talked about the sawmill. The storage, it is just a standard storage right out of the gate, which I find kind of strange. I, you would think that at a lumber mill, I mean, I'm fine with the base storage being standard. Hey, but you'd think that being at a lumber mill you would have extra material storage. That would make sense in my head. Kind of shocked it didn't have it. But, yeah, what are you going to do? I upgraded it to level 3 because these were taking so long to finish that I figured I'd be doing something at the same time. Standard command center. There's nothing crazy going on here. It is still level 3. I did build a workshop and only put it at level 2 with my furnace in it so I can get some extra salvage. Uh, nothing spectacular about that that you probably wouldn't already know. <clears throat> Craft your toolkits and explosives and all that good stuff. Now I did upgrade my shooting range too because I always talk about why I don't upgrade these two items specifically. So we'll start with the fighting gym. It gives me my plus 20 max health and a 25% fighting experience rate. Those are pretty awesome. I can't. I think this one gives you wits. No, that one gives you wits. So this would give you a uh, cardio or endurance, whatever. It it will give you yes, cardio. That is right. So if I upgraded this, I could get cardio, but cardio isn't that hard to really get. You just run around. I mean, don't be lazy. Just sprint. Run around in circles at your base. And if I upgraded it, it would also cost me a material per day, which it, it can add up when you're playing on a high difficulty like Lethal Zone. And then when you're in a large area like this where you have, you know, stuff taking away materials all over the place, then it, it can add up pretty quickly. So I'll move up here to the upgraded one. As you can see, minus one material per day. Now it does give me another item that has a gain in experience rate and it gives me another button to press. But I don't really ever press these buttons anyways and we'll talk about why I don't like pressing them anyways in just a second. But I did throw a comfy chair in because I like my morale. But that's why I just don't like how the materials stack up because if I put that at level three that at level two that at level two and then all five of these that's what five eight materials per day that would just get burned and playing on lethal zone that's a fair amount of materials every single day 
to get burned out just because you have all of these things. Now, yes, you'll probably be in the end game by the time you get to that point, but you'll also be pretty spartan for materials to just find. You'll have to rely heavily on your economy, and as you can tell, there are no outdoor slots. So the easiest thing to do, which is the beer, in my opinion, where you use your food for beer, you just can't do that whatsoever. Now you can use this nice field hospital and do that to make strong painkillers. In fact, this is where we'll start. So I have the field hospital. This is the sheriff a large facility. You have to have a sheriff leader to get this. I did a lot of swapping around and I even put the right mod in here to show you how you would have to make your money. But yeah, you'd have to have a sheriff to do this. It does give you preventative medicine with it, which is a plus 10 max health. You have three beds just like in a level three um, infirmary. Enhanced passive recovery so you will get a little bit quicker health and injury healing that kind of thing scrapes and bruises so it's going to cost you two meds per day you get inpatient care which will give you 15 influence per day that's not really enough to write home about i wouldn't even notice that and it does cost a material like i said and i put a pill press in here so this is just normal you have three beds to treat people crafting items it does everything a level three would do and of course i have met a guy with medicine so i have some bonuses but this is the thing that you would be doing now i don't have a pharmacology character i i do have one in my um legacy bank which at least i'm pretty sure i do recruit hey, legacy survivor let's see probably should have done this off screen but those strong painkillers are going to end up being your way. Yep, there she is. Are going to be your way to earn your influence. And when you have that medicine character, you do get bonuses in how much this stuff costs. So as you can see, it only costs two ethanol and one medicine. And it gives you six strong painkillers. Each stack of strong painkillers, I think, sells for like 107, if I'm not mistaken. We'll call in a food trader just to find out. But it will sell at like 107, and you get two stacks of them. So you'll get 214 influence off of it. Medicine is not as readily available as food is. That's one of the main reasons why I don't do it. And I also spend a lot of my medicine on plague cures. Now, obviously, they only cost two, but I, I don't, I just don't do the painkiller route too far because usually I have to upgrade my infirmary to three and then it costs materials, and you're starting to get the point. I don't like spending materials. But that is a quick overview, and then right here, you also have medical help which is just like any infirmary. You have emergency medicine, which will take away injuries and trauma instantly at the cost of two medicine. And then you have infection therapy, which does the same thing, but with a blood plague infection, and it only costs three plague samples. Now, if you're fully infected with blood plague, it will not save you. You have to take a cure. But if you have a partial infection, this will take care of you with three samples. Then, of course, you have primary care. Now, this is one of those times where you could change things up and you could run the field hospital, ditch the shooting range, put an infirmary, and do double primary. It won't give you quite what it used to before they nerfed it, but it, it'll make you pretty tough to kill. And then you have a boost to your injury and trauma recovery, so it'll just essentially help you recover from injuries and such a lot faster. That's all that really does. I have never really used it. I have used primary care before. Probably need to use it in my lethal zone run, but you know, I, I'm, I'm not smart about that stuff. And then boost infection recovery. That just makes characters that are 
that you're not playing as, or survivors, I guess I should say, they will recover from infection a lot faster. And you do have to have pathology for that, and it costs 15 plague samples and 2 medicine, and this is on standard. So if I had to guess, I'm going to say on lethal zone, that's probably 30 and 4. So it's going to eat you quite hardcore. Just like this, this does go at least double, if not triple, what it is right here on the lethal zone. Then we'll go to this. This is specific to the field hospital. You have special treatments. So you have physical therapy where it will heal all injuries and trauma. You have to have knowledge of surgery. It, it as far it just does the same thing, I guess. Well, it does it for the whole community rather than the character you're playing as. Okay, I understand. We all understand now. And then this is infection therapy. It heals the infection for the entire community. So it's just like running the emergency medicine and the infection therapy here, except for it will clean up your whole community. So if you get blasted and say everyone ends up with a little bit of blood plague, which you probably won't have nine people, but if you were in a smaller base where you only have like six people, let's say you're in a mid-game base and you build this and you get a little bit of blood plague on everybody and you don't really want to take anyone out with blood plague, then you can just hit this button, eight medicine, and ten minutes, and you will have everybody cured. So that's not too terribly bad, honestly, with the amount of people that I've had knocked up with blood plague before. But that is a quick overview, quick but fairly detailed overview of the field hospital. Trade Depot, I'm not going to get super in-depth because everyone knows what it is. It's a fairly standard item that most people play with. It gives you 500 influence a day, costs a material, and you can summon traders like we just did a second ago. And since we did so, I already have some strong painkillers in here. Where are you at? Food Trader. Let's go see how much these sell for trade with enclave so yes it sells for 204 for six of them so that means three which is a standard stack would sell for 102 so you're not making bad money at this point so we'll do that and boom we just knocked out almost half of their influence right there and that is the quick way to make money if you can gather up enough meds and ethanol you, you can make some pretty good money. Um, trade Depot, we just went over. Summon Traders, we just traded with one of those traders. Let's move up. Eh, we'll save the lounge for last. Armory. So that's your Trade Depot. You have to be a trader, obviously. Your Armory is your Warlord large facility. Now, this one, I have a Salvage Furnace, so it does add extra bonus parts from Salvage and minus one fuel. But it costs one material per day, and then you can salvage weapons, repair weapons, and improve your gun accuracy. So we're going to start right here. You can craft any round for your guns that you want. Now, I've said this before. I think I'll say it again. I don't typically use guns in the high difficulty. I remembered why in my lethal zone playthrough that I'm doing right now I had a um, AR-15 and I had a blood feral show up at my base so I ammo or mag dumped him I should say and within seconds my base was swarmed with screamers and zombies and it was just an annoyance and I didn't even kill the stupid blood feral that I dumped the mag into and I hit him with the vast majority of the bullets and I mean that's running five five six bullets which are pretty well i mean they're not massive but they're they're pretty good rounds in and of themselves all i managed to do was knock his helmet off and then i had to run away from him and dodge him for a minute and beat him with a baseball bat because i couldn't reload quickly enough but yeah i just don't fiddle with guns in lethal zone now on standard zone oh yeah i love shooting me some zombies and i have built this before so that i could build up a ton of ammunition 
specifically for doing that or when helping um, some of my friends that play this, I will join in their game and I will get them out a ton of ammo because, yeah, why not? Let them go shoot zombies in their free time on Lethal Zone and listen to them tell me how they got owned later. It's pretty fun. Um, you can also produce ammo. I'll say that. I have bonuses from chemistry and munitions, but it will let you produce ammo just like, um, I think you can at the workshop too, can't you? Thought you could. Yes, you can. It works just like at the workshop. There's nothing new there. Now, muzzle attachments, you can, um, you can craft these. I don't remember the specific skills. I know, oh, engineering. You have to have knowledge of engineering to do it. So I've got these unlocked. I've never used it before. Don't care to use it. Uh, only thing I use is the, the super good suppressors. That, that's about it. Then you can craft explosives. So any explosive that you can find or buy outside of the independence pack, you can get here. Um, the only, let's see, chemistry, that's standard chemistry, munitions. Yeah, so thermite requires your munitions, your fuel bombs and firecrackers and all that stuff requires at minimum chemistry pipe bombs and the like are going to require power c4 requires munitions and electronics so c4 is probably the best thing in here right behind the fuel bombs i do love burning some zombies but c4 is a good way to take out plague hearts if getting bloater gas is not available essentially what you do is you run powerhouse and you will heavy hit a plague heart three times and then you just need to hit it with two c4 charges now you need to hit them separately so you would hit it three times it will do its thing you know do its whole injury scream call zombies blah 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 drop a c4 charge once the gas around it disappears blow up that C4 charge, drop another C4 charge, run around for a minute, blow it up, and boom goes the Plague Heart. Or you can just use three C4 charges if you want to spend the goods because it is quite expensive. It's 12 chemicals, 6 circuitry, and 100 parts on standard zone. Now that does get you 6, but if you're just doing a Plague Heart out of pure C4, that's just two Plague Hearts. So, I mean, you're really going to be burning through some stuff at that point. But the explosives are pretty neat. It's an all-in-one shot for them. And then, as well, you can repair all of your weapons, just like you can in the workshop. The only reason why I left the workshop is because I cannot craft toolkits. Now, if I could craft toolkits, I would probably have ditched the workshop for something else. But since I can't, I didn't. And that will bring us over here to the Sniper Tower. Now this is the Builder Large Facility. This one is going to be a little quicker to explain. So it has two armed guards. It unlocks Sniper Cover, which if you use that call-in, it's a radio call-in, it will give you an area to highlight. And you will have essentially some dude with a 50 caliber rain hell on any zombies in there it is quite good for taking out juggernauts if you don't have the explosives it can take out ferals it can be a little tricky because they don't like to sit still but that is what i've used it for i think i showed it in one of i think i showed it in drucker county when we were at mike's concrete i'm pretty sure i showed the call in itself being used on a juggernaut so if you want to see it in action, go ahead and jump to Mike's Concrete. It is in the Drucker County Base Review uh, playlist. Check it out. It'll be obviously in the second part of it because I will have been going over the base there. But anyways, it does cost one ammo and one material per day. It does give you extra passive scouting from the base. 
and it gives you active defense which gives you plus 45 i'm assuming meters of safe zone radius and you have to have ammo and storage for that here you can do sniper practice which costs two ammo on standard i believe it is four or five on lethal it reduces your infestation rate so this used to reduce your threat now it reduces the infestation rate so it will allocate ammo resources to our sniper tower crew to reduce the threat of zombie attack on our home for a while and it will slightly improve your shooting skills i'm assuming that would be for the total community i'm not 100 percent certain but i doubt it gives you a ton but that is the sniper tower it is actually pretty good to build if you're um in a higher difficulty for the first time i'm pretty sure i used it on my first playthrough of nightmare zone and it was fairly helpful because i would find myself running into juggernauts and in areas that i wanted to go so i would use the call in and they would take care of the juggernaut for me and it was pretty handy honestly and we will get now to the last one. So I talk about the lounge level 3 a lot. I don't often build it in just standard bases because it takes forever. Because you have to start with a basic lounge, then a 2, then a 3. And it's a long, long process to actually build it. But here it is in all of its glory. So it gives you two beds right out of the gate. And then entertainment options. It gives you a plus 15 morale per person. That is huge. And then if you have a knowledge of the arts, you get plus 5. But I've said it before. I'll say it again. I feel like that's a waste of a fifth skill when you're in a high difficulty. Standard zone, green zone, I don't care what you have. Even dread zone, I could care less. If you want an arts person, run an arts person. Cool beans. Um, it does cost one material per day as well. Like we said, everything here, as far as what I've built, except for this lonely fighting gym and the workshop, because I didn't finish it, cost a material. So it does get kind of expensive. Now, the morale activities, just like standard, it will have the schedule a break, play games, and mix a round of drinks. Then you also get poker night which I believe comes at level 2, and then Watch TV is at level 3. Then you have Movie Night at level 3. Now this will take a lot of labor, and it will raise your noise quite a lot, but it gives you a big 25 morale bump, highest on here by far and away. The only thing close is mix a round of drinks, but it only lasts for 15 minutes. That lasts for a full hour. So if you have, you know, if you want to hit that 100 morale for your, your achievement, if you have a fight breakout because you have two pissy people, movie night can help remedy that pretty quickly along with the just standard plus 15 morale per person will take care of it. Now this little button right here, the watch training videos, this is the reason for the lounge level three. If you press this button, in five minutes, every single one of my community person's skills will raise ever so slightly. So we'll look at Kat. She needs two, one, and three. So we'll check her out again when this finishes. Two, one, three. Two, one, three. We just have to remember that. I probably will forget. But that little button right there will give you a small, but an increase, and it stacks up pretty large over the course of 15 20 minutes of gameplay you'll end up maxing out people's skills relatively quickly because you can just keep spamming it it doesn't cost you anything but a little bit of labor and a little bit of time to do it and it will just literally train your people for you you don't have to go out and fight anything you don't have to go run around off and almost said the wasteland because i've been playing fallout but you don't have to go run around zombies or loot stuff or make tons of painkillers to get your medicine skill up or anything like that you just spam that button over and over and over and you can build this in just your small base you don't have to wait until you're in the top base to build this 
And that is probably one of, if not the most powerful facilities in this game, is this lounge level 3, because you can passively train people. I mean, I can still go out and run amok and go shoot zombies over here, go trade with this idiot. No, that's rolling out the way. I still haven't done that. <laughs> so I ticked off the original people for rolling out the welcome wagon. They were up here somewhere, and they started getting grumpy, so I shot them. And, uh, yeah, here's the new, here's the new group that I'm supposed to go talk to. <laughs> no thank you. But yes, this lounge level 3 is freaking awesome. Um, but yeah, that, that is all of the main leader buildings. I mean, the, the lounge doesn't technically count as one, but it is one because you have to have a sheriff as your leader to get a lounge level three so i kind of count it in the same category as the field hospital trade depot armory sniper tower now is this how i would lay out this base if i had to choose uh yes and no so if this was me i would keep the lounge and the field hospital and and the trade depot i would probably trade out the sniper tower for the um the forge and then what i would do is i'd put a salvage furnace here here and here actually i would take out the armory and put an auto shop that's what i would do put an auto shop for the armory and a forge for the sniper tower and then go ahead and throw a salvage furnace in all three of these. So I'll end up with what? Plus, I think it's plus 25%. It doesn't give you a percentage anymore. So I think it'd be plus 75% parts from salvage. So you can just get a truck ton of parts. And they sell for one influence each. So, I mean, you can make a buku amount of money just by scrapping a bunch of junk that you find from looting. Uh, because I just don't have any use for all these bullets, typically. And I don't feel as though I desperately need the sniper tower, really. That's, I, I hate infestations. I don't plan on killing a plague heart that's going to awaken another plague heart. I'm just going to try and kill them in groups if need be. But, yeah, that would probably be what I would do. I would leave the gym and the shooting range and the workshop... And I would just put an auto shop and a forge in. So that's how I would probably build this. It, it's, yeah, and that's what I would do. That's what I, I, I agree with myself. Um, defensibility of this base, I'll talk about it real quick. It is super simple. They come from over there, over there, and over there. That's all you have to worry about. It's a big open base super easy to clear out zombies if you are one of the types that likes to run guns you can literally just stand up here and pick them off as they come in as you can see you can see that door right there you can see that door right there and you can see that door right there so you can just smack all of them extremely easily without having to worry about it now then Oh man, it looks like her skills went up. I can't remember what it was. Was it 312? Or 213? I think it was 213. I don't remember. You'll remember the numbers, I hope. If not, scroll back, please, and come back and let me know <laughs> down in the comments what the numbers were. But I know we definitely at least increased our wits and possibly are shooting as well just off of that one run of the videos. So, I mean, that's how quickly it can stack up your survivors. But with that, I will stop rambling on and on. I know this one is long, but I did want to go over... Get that logo out of my face. I did want to go over the leader buildings. I'm going to break all of those down and put it in an episode by itself. And I'm going to put it in a more of a game guide playlist that I'm going to be gradually working on as I make these other videos. But I hope you enjoyed this one. I hope you learned something. If you haven't learned anything, then cool. Please let me know if there's anything that I missed 
that I could add to try and help teach people a little bit more. Just drop those down in the comments. If you enjoyed this video and liked what I had to say, please like and subscribe. It helps me with the algorithm and all that good mumbo jumbo. But I won't hold you guys any longer. I appreciate you and all of your time watching this video. As always, I'm the ADHD Gamer, and I will see you in the next one.